algorithm that we propose. Uh, this is a possible merge situation with the two nodes that may merge into a third. Um, so there are three hypotheses. The first is that the same, it's uh, the third node is the same target as node one. Uh, the other one is that it's the same target as node two. And finally, the extra hypothesis is that it's both, uh, both uh, targets merge into a single node. We can calculate uh, costs for each hypothesis and uh, uh, we want the optimization to decide based on these costs uh, which is the correct hypothesis and also not just based on the cost but also the global context of all tracks which you can see represented by the extra arcs that connect these three nodes to uh, elsewhere uh, which is the, the rest of the graph, all the other nodes are not represented here. So this is one of the hypotheses that we'd like to model. Uh, node 1 and 3 have the same target and node, three, node 2 connects elsewhere. Uh, and uh, the total cost is C13, which is the cost of the, this arc. Uh, this is the second hypothesis in which uh, node 2 is the same target as node 3, the associated cost. And uh, this is the tricky part, which is the merge. So we want the total cost in this case to be C merge, which is a cost that we have defined uh, earlier. And not just the sum of the, the costs of these two arcs. So there are actually two problems to in order, that we need to solve in order to be able to support this hypothesis. That the, the total cost is not linear in the optimization variables, which are the binary variables that indicate whether each arc was selected or not. And the second problem is that if I, it violates the no overlap restriction uh, because you see two arcs connecting to the same node. So here's what we propose. Uh, the key idea is to encode a merge as one normal link and one termination. And you can see here I added the virtual node to one of the nodes, in this case node two. Uh, we need to satisfy two conditions. The first is that the total cost must be C merge as we define. And this actually restricts the termination cost to that given by this equation. The second condition is that if the termination node is active, then the other arc, C13, must also be active. This implies that termination only occurs in a merge. So it requires that we disable all the incoming arcs to node 3. This is the graph structure that we propose. So I will now show that it will uh, solve the problem and encode all three, all three hypotheses. This is the first one, uh, in which uh, node 3 and node 1 have the same target, uh, and it has the correct cost. The second hypothesis, uh, node 2 and 3, the same target. And finally, the third hypothesis, uh, which is a normal link and determination. And the total cost is C merge as we required. And importantly, the proposed structure actually restricts the solutions to only these three. Because uh, if you define some other structure, it's possible that you will get some inconsist inconsistent solutions that are, do not actually represent any physical hypothesis that you want to model. So we can do the same by, for split, split events by reversing the arc directions, and you might get with this process something like this graph that you see here. As you can see, the Hungarian algorithm is now free to choose between merges, splits, and regular arcs to better explain the data. This has the same computational uh, complexity as the simple matching. However, it has models a lot more hypotheses. I'll now motivate the second and third stages of the system and uh, explain the second one. So as you can see here, uh, targets traveling alone can be tracked without any ambiguity. But as soon as they, uh, they merge into a group, they lose their individual identities. The strategy to solve this is to first identify the nodes that correspond to groups, which is the second stage of the system, and then match individual targets across the groups, which is the third stage. In order to identify groups, we propose to first count the targets in each node, and uh, we propose a method based on flow circulation, where each unit of flow represents one target. So we, we enforce uh, at least, uh, uh, well, the, the first, first of all, the optimization will try to explain the data by minimizing the number of targets, which is what you see in the first equation, uh, the minimization. Um, it also enforces at least one target per node, 
which acts as a boundary condition, and this is the inequation at the bottom. And finally, the counts are mostly obtained from the flow conservation equations, which is the, the second equation you see here. And this basically means that, for example, two separate targets entering a node mean that two targets, uh, together or not, merge or not, must also go out. And this is all, um, this, this is all the sort of uh, restrictions that you can uh, inject into uh, a circulation problem, which is readily solved with uh, the edmunds carp algorithm. So since there may actually be more than one equivalent solution, sometimes we use uh, bounding box sizes uh, in the cost to break any ties. Uh, but uh, mostly, for the most part, counts are obtained just by analyzing the graph topology and not by analyzing the images directly. This is uh, equivalent to locating occluded targets, since now that we know how many targets are hidden in each tracklet. We now have the counts. I'll now describe the proposed method to identify, to, re to recover identities from groups. Uh, we start by defining a group subgraph as the nodes and arcs with flows greater than one, since they carry two or more targets. And this is the subgraph that you see in blue, the, the, these nodes and arcs uh, in blue. Uh, note that this is not just one group, but in general, it's a graph with all the groups where each group will be one connected component. We also define those entering a group as arcs pointing to the group subgraph and those exiting as, those, as arcs pointing out of the group subgraph. Now, to track across the groups, we simply have to match the entering targets to the exiting targets, and this is a simple matching problem. This is, here you can see the structure of the problem we, we need to solve, which is uh, simple. Uh, we can calculate the cost for each arc normally in the same way as with the simple uh, matching for global optimization tracking. However, in this case, we connect each entering arc to an exiting, uh, each entering node to an exiting node only if it's reachable through the group subgraph. And the optimal matching is obtained with the Hungarian algorithm. This is an example of the final result. Uh, note that unlike other methods, we do not link across arbitrary gaps, which has been uh, the paradigm for uh, most of previous works. Instead, uh, since being in the same group or connected component is a necessary but not sufficient condition to match two nodes, uh, this is actually a powerful representation that uh, restricts the, tra the trajectories. So it only admits physically plausible tracks for occlusions instead of uh, gaps that uh, may not be physically plausible. I'll now show some results. Uh, we tested the system on PETS 2009 and 2006 data sets. We report some standard metrics, such as the multiple object tracking accuracy. Uh, on PETS 2009, uh, it outperforms all 12 state-of-the-art systems uh, from the PETS 2010 evaluation. And uh, on PETS 2006, which is challenging, got very good results, uh, but don't have any other standardized metrics from single camera tracking to compare. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, so that's it basically for the results. Uh, here's a short video. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. So you can see if you follow target, this is short. Uh, you can see that there are quite some complicated merges and splits, and it's still uh, able to track. So that's a sample of the sort of video that we can work with. So in conclusion, we formalized group formation as a global optimization problem. Uh, we propose uh, polynomial time algorithms for the multi-match problem, the counting problem, and the identity match across groups. And also we prove state of the art with just simple detection and low level stages. So that's it. Thank you for your time.